Now we've talked a little bit about what the PSAT is, why you should take it, and the National Merit Scholarship Program. But what's really important is that when you sit down to actually take the PSAT, that you have a couple of test-taking strategies in your back pocket. Remember, the PSAT, like the SAT, isn't a content test. It's not like taking a you know, US history midterm. You're going to need to not only know the content, but then also how to take the test. There are a couple of strategies that we can go over that will help you out with this. The first, and what some say is the most important, is the ability to eliminate answers. Now, remember, with the PSAT, there are three different sections. You have the critical reading section, the math section, and the writing section. We'll go over specific strategies and what these sections look like in other episodes. But overall, you can eliminate answers in all of them using a variety of techniques. For example, in the math section, when you see your five answer choices, if one of them is completely oddball, like 350%, and the others are somewhere between 20 and 30%, chances are you can eliminate it. Similarly, in the writing section, if you have a really long, wordy answer choice, most likely it's not going to be the correct answer. Each of these sections has these little tips and tricks, and we're going to go over them more in depth, but it's really important to know that you can eliminate answers on the PSAT. Hand in hand with eliminating answers is guessing strategically. What do I mean when I say guessing strategically? The PSAT, like the SAT, is a numbers game. Now, just like the SAT, on the PSAT, when you get one correct answer right, you get one raw point. When you get an answer wrong, you get negative a quarter raw point. These raw points translate to scaled scores. On the PSAT, you can earn anywhere between 20 and 80 per section, which means that overall, you're gonna get between 60 and 240. But that's not the point. The point is that when you're able to eliminate a certain number of answer choices, it actually works in your favor, which means that you get more raw points than negative raw points. Let's take a look at what I mean. If you wanted to get into statistic probability and everything, you could actually create some really, really complicated formulas that will show you why guessing strategically actually works. But what you really need to know is that you're, if you're able to eliminate even one answer choice out of the five, you're going to come out ahead. So say, for example, that you have five answer choices, like you do on almost all the PSAT questions. You'll have a couple of math grid in, but that won't apply here. If you're able to eliminate four of the five answer choices, you're going to end up with the correct answer, and you're going to get positive one raw point. If you're not able to eliminate any of the answer choices, say, for example, that you look at the question and you can't eliminate any of the five, what's going to happen is that you're going to guess. And when you guess, you have a 20% chance of getting that answer correctly. Say that you have a series of really difficult problems and you're not able to eliminate any of the answer choices. If you guess on, say, five problems, statistically, on average, you're going to get it right only one of the five times. You're going to get it wrong the other four times. That's if you guess completely at random. Now, if you multiply four times a negative quarter raw point, you're going to get a negative one point cumulatively. That means that if you answer five questions completely at random without eliminating any answer choices, you're going to get it wrong four times, which means you're going to get a negative quarter raw point, and correct one time, which is a positive one raw point. What that basically means is that you get a cumulative point total of zero. It doesn't benefit you statistically if you can't eliminate any answer choices to guess. If you can eliminate even one answer choice, say you can eliminate one, two, three, or if you can eliminate all four and get the answer correct, it's worth answering the question. Now, I know this seems a little complicated, but let's take a look at a couple of example problems so you can see what I mean and we can see this in action. 